Hey everyone, welcome back. So um, if you didn't watch the first couple of parts, first one, we just went through the 10K and just kind of things I look for. The second one um, completed the financial statements, just pulled those in from the 10K. And then the last one, we just went over the revenue projections and we came up with two different ways to kind of look at it. Um, and something you could do also, just kind of check this, you could sensitize this. Um, so we are calculating total global paid members, right? So we get a number there and then we kind of see how does that um, compared to total number of households. Um, so you could look at, you know, how many users there are in other services as well, see if that kind of makes sense. Um, how many users does Disney Plus have? I think they just passed like 120 million. Um, Hulu, I think is like 30 or 40 million. So, and obviously there's overlap, right? Like I have Disney Plus, I have HBO, I have Hulu, I have Netflix. Um, so, you know, there are other things you could do to kind of refine this, but what we'll do now um, we're going to link this up into the DCF. And then once we kind of get this linked up, we'll just kind of fine tune our um, final assumptions that we'll have down here. And then from there, we'll get evaluation. We'll see how, how things kind of turn out. So first thing, revenues, right? So just do equals, go back to your income statement and 2018 revenues right there. And then you could actually just paste formulas. So that's what I do. Um, and that'll get us those numbers. And we actually have this um, all set up already. So we can actually just pull in 21 through 2030 as well. Um, so we'll paste formulas all the way across. And then I always just kind of check, right? So 27, 670 um, up to 50. And so we'll actually, we'll update this twice. So in this first one, we're gonna use, um, if you watched the last video, we had two different ways we projected revenue. This was at the high level, um, just looking at new, new user growth. Um, and then the other one, we did it by country. And then there's a mix issue with the, the price per country as well. So just kind of two different ways and you get, you know, a little bit different value, but we can see how material that'll be to our total valuation in a, in a couple of minutes. So next thing, cost of goods. So we'll link this up first on the income statement. And this always links back up to the top, 2018. Um, and we'll do that for 1920. And we're, this is going to be interesting. We actually have to back some numbers out of here and I'll, I'll explain that here in a minute. But for now, let's just get everything kind of linked up. Um, SGNA excluding amortization. So this can be hard sometimes because they don't, they won't tell you if there's amortization in any of this. Um, so for now, we're just going to have it be all three of these. So we'll do that. Um, so SGNA is selling general and administrative. Um, so like marketing is like a selling cost in a sense. Um, technology and development, you could label this other or R and D actually. So, you know, actually let's do that just for the sake of, um, the model. So we'll do. SGNA will be marketing in the general and administrative and then other, and we'll relabel it will actually be the technology and development. And that's really like R and D. Um, so maybe we want to look at that separately. So do that. And then we'll copy these two over. We get that. Um, so this is linked. So yeah, just to walk through the formulas in case this is the first time you're ever looking at DCF, right? So gross profit is revenue lost, less cost of goods sold. EBITDA um, stands for earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization. So we're taking gross profit. In theory, we're subtracting out SGNA, excluding DNA, but um, kind of hard to tell if it is or not. And then um, interest and taxes. So they get you the EBITDA, you add back depreciation and amortization to get you your EBIT. Um, and why is this not? So this is linked up actually down here. So we'll have to, we'll link those up in a minute. Um, and then taxes, this links up as well, just on the income statement. So provision for income taxes. And if you watch the, the video where I fill out the income statement um, from the financial statements, that's why I keep all these positive um, and then just kind of adjust the formulas down here. So for like interest expense as well, um, I always kind of flip the signs and then um, just because now when we look at taxes as a percentage, it's a positive number. Um, whereas if you had these as negative, like they are in the, in the 10 K, then the signs just get weird. I don't know. It's just my preference. Um, you can do it however you feel. Um, but there we go. So we have kind of the core inputs entered here. And then these are just formulas, right? Sales growth. This is looking at how's it grown year over year. So you take current year minus prior year divided by prior year. Um, that's one way to do it. Another way is you can also, um, you can do like 2020 divided by 2019 minus one, give, give you the same thing. Uh, and then we look at COGS as a percent of sales. Um, the reason for this is it should stay relatively constant. And what's gonna be interesting here is we are gonna back out um, content development. 
So that's something we do have to adjust on here still, and we'll we'll work through that here in a second. SGNA is a percent of sales, right? So same thing, just how much is the SGNA in relation? So that looks good, right? It's going down um, in relation to percent of sales, and then this other is actually now technology and development as a percent of sales. So um, we can see, right, like R&D looks like, or, you know, whatever we want to call this, technology and development. I'm pretty sure it's the same as their R&D. stayed about 8 to 7%, so that, that's a good sign. And the tax rate um, going up, uh, but nothing crazy there. So CapEx, we'll link this now. And I always just pull the PP&E. Um, so they don't have a ton of CapEx, but this is where we're going to have to add in a couple new things. Um, and then depreciation. So we'll start with just the traditional depreciation, the traditional DNA here. Um, so we link those up, right? And once we get those linked up, you'll see now depreciation links up here. Um, and then also links up here. And then this formula should be, yep, just taking this and then adding some of these items. And we'll still have to do the change in working capital, but we don't have that yet, but we'll, we'll get it here in a second. So on most models, this is probably fine. Uh, but what we noticed as we read through um, the financial statements, they actually had, I guess I pulled it in here, um, additions to content assets. And so this isn't, this This is cash flow, right? They're paying, they paid, you know, 8.6, 9.8, 13, 13, 11 billion dollars a year in cash, but you're not seeing this reflected on the income statement. They amortize it. So, right, they're taking these costs and they're amortizing it and their cost of goods sold. So what we actually need to do is we're going to need to back these costs out of cost of goods sold. And then we're going to have to layer them back in after EBITDA to adjust on that aspect for the additions. So what we'll do here, so we have um, cost of goods sold. And what we can do, I think to make this a little bit more clear, let's um, first, let me move this out of the way just so we don't screw everything up. We'll move that down there for just a second. And then what we'll do is we're actually gonna do, we'll add a row here and we'll call it add content amortization. So that's, and then we wanna add this back. Okay. So we'll do that and then we'll link this up real quick. Um, so content amortization is this piece. And now we can see, right, they just became way more profitable um, from a gross profit standpoint. But we're really just ultimately trying to get the unlevered free cash flow. Um, so now that we've added back content and amortization, now here we'll do DNA and then we'll have, and uh, we'll just do it. We'll keep it separate of content. So now here we can link in the amortization of the content, which is gonna be this piece. And then we are gonna to wanna to subtract that. So um, basically like what happens is our EBITDA looks way better. Um, and then our EBIT looks worse, but uh, just for like the sake of being able to track everything, we'll do that. And then we're gonna add it back down here. Um, so and we'll do plus amortization of content. So we'll link. And actually here we can just link this up because we already have it pulling. We'll do that. Now we can see our unlevered free cash flow. Um, and so it's slightly different, right? And you, you know, you might be looking at this and be like, that seems kind of pointless. Um, and actually this should, actually no, we can't link this up right here. Sorry, this is plus content or sorry, not plus, um, this is, what am I doing here? No, we do add that, sorry. Um, but then we also need to subtract the purchase of content. So from here, we'll link this up and that's where we're gonna come pull the additions. So we want that number and it looks like we actually want these to just be negative. So we'll just make that a negative formula and we'll make those green. And now what we can see is we have a 
Oh well, yeah. Um, interesting. So yeah, I mean, when you, so I guess what I'm saying is in 2019, for example, right. Content amortization, um, 9.2 million of that was being captured in this COGS number. So it's, you know, showing gross profit. Um, if you subtract those, right, that gives you the, the eight, uh, gives you roughly 8 billion, but in reality, they amortized 9 billion, but they spent 14 billion. So they spent an extra $4 billion, $5 billion almost. Um, so it's really like 3 billion, um, is yeah. So, I mean here, right. Adjusted EBIT is 2.3. Um, when you kind of adjust for these pieces and then when you actually, you know, add it back with this, that net difference is 4.7 actually. Yeah. So that's huge. Um, so it makes the cash flow negative. So, and that's something we are going to need to model out now is the purchase of content, but, um, and we'll, you know, we'll add those here. We can just add a couple of rows. Well, that looks a little wonky. So we'll get rid of that, that line. Um, and then we'll call this content purchase amount. And then we'll do amortization of content. So we'll have those. Um, and let me just add the big border again. Amortization. And this amortization of content is going to be as a percent of content purchase so that we're going to handle this the same way we do DNA as a percent of CapEx. Um, so what this will be, right, it'll be amortization of content divided by purchase of content. So, I mean, what we can see here, right, is like they were heavily investing in content in 2018 and 19, and then they kind of eased off the accelerator in 2020 because the amortization amount is, uh, you know, catching up to the purchase amount. So, and then content purchase amount, and we can do this as um, percent of revenue. So we'll do, I guess we'll do negative this divided by total revenue. So yeah, I mean, right, they're spending 83% of revenue on um, new content. So, um, and then last few things we need to sync up here and here, I'll move this back. Um, just for that is we'll need to sync up net debt. So if you're not familiar with net debt, this is just total outstanding debt, less cash. So that's why we pull in the balance sheet. So total debt, they have long-term debt here, and then they have short-term debt. Um, and then from there, we're going to subtract out cash of 8.2. So they have net debt of 8.1. So equity value comes down. So um, if you're not familiar with the difference between enterprise value and equity value, enterprise value is basically what you have to pay to own 100% of the company, which is going to be all of the outstanding equity plus any debt the company has. And then you would completely own the company, right? That's the idea behind enterprise value. Um, so you, to go from enterprise value down to equity value, you subtract out the debt, the net debt amount, and then that gets you the equity value. Um, so yeah, no, right now, um, ignore this, right? We haven't put in any of our assumptions here. So it looks a little weird. Um, but we've got this for the most part linked up. We'll go ahead and add in uh, the last part is working capital once again, off the balance sheet. So current assets, what you really want here are, um, assets that are a use of cash. So this is usually going to be, and I mean, when I look at this, I'll probably just pick the other cause they don't really break it out too much for us. Um, but it's going to be like accounts, um, receivable. So the way to think about that is like someone owes you money, but they haven't paid you. So you don't actually have the cash. So when we do the working capital and the change in that, we're adjusting for the cash that is tied up in the business to operate. So inventories is another thing, right? You outlay cash for inventory that hasn't yet been sold and converted back to cash. Um, so for current assets, we'll do that. And then for current liabilities, similar thing, but it's gonna be sources. So accounts payable, right? These are things you owe people, but haven't paid. So you still are actually holding on to the cash. Crude expenses and other liabilities. I think of this as the same way. Um, so really it's like we've accrued for the expense. So like we know we owe the person money, we just haven't paid them. Um, so we'll do those two for this. Paste those formulas over. And um, yeah, I mean, it's not a really big impact to their um, 
kind of schedule there. So for this video, we'll stop here. And this just really linked up kind of the basis here. And then in the last video, we're going to go through and we'll model out how we do um, content purchase amount. We'll think through that a little bit. And then we'll link up the rest of this. And then we'll, we'll get evaluation. So thanks for tuning in.